This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com, and today I'd like to talk about setting up acceleration enrichment on an MS3 or an AMP EFI ECU. We're going to do three things, setting up MS3 data logs, setting up acceleration enrichment in your tune, and then setting up Megalog Viewer HD to view the logs. About 10 years ago now, I saw a demonstration that luckily was videoed and put up on YouTube. If you look for Dr. Jim Court, IC Engine and Transient Enrichments in YouTube, you should be able to find it. I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. This was one of those aha moments where all of a sudden I started to understand what acceleration enrichment really was. So now let's go into Tuner Studio. And the first thing I want to do is go to File, Vehicle Projects, Project Properties, and a Project Properties sheet will pop up. Here it is over here on the right. And I want to make sure we do internal, under Settings, Internal Log Fields is activated. Then if you go to data logging, SD card data logging, we're gonna set up the high speed logging in all the AMP EFI ECUs. I like to set it up as trigger and RPM. Anytime that we're pulling more than 100 RPM, I'll turn on the data logging. You always wanna set it up to 128 bytes and timed to five whenever doing anything with acceleration enrichment. That will give you 200 data points per second. I like to start a new log anytime that you uh, exceed the log limit of 10 minutes in my case. And down here at the bottom is where you set the fields to log. On the previous screen, when we set up the advanced options, what we end up getting is the ability to get to next spark tooth. Anytime you pick anything in this box, you can hit the little arrow to the right and send it over to selected data fields. This is the list of things I always want to make sure are in my data log, at least the minimum when doing acceleration enrichment. They are engine, duty cycle one, next spark tooth, we already talked about, pulse width, TPS map, Excel enrichment, map dot, which is how fast the EECU considers the manifold air pressure is changing and the manifold absolute pressure is changing. TPS dot, which is how fast the ECU says your, your foot is moving or the TPS is moving. RPM dot, volumetric efficiency one, maybe just VE depending on what code you're running, RPM and AFR. In the next screen, we're gonna go ahead and start setting up Excel enrichment. So what I do is come down to Excel enrich settings. It's under the Excel enrich settings tab. And I wanna set it up on this tag down box as Excel pump AE, wall wetting for now I wanna turn off, and tps.use percent wide open throttle, and I wanna set that to on. Excel Enrichment Settings tab will become available. When you hit that, up pops a new screen, Excel Pump Enrichment. What this is, is there's a slider along the bottom. You can make it 100% TPS-based Excel Enrichment. Slide it to the left, you get Excel Map-based Excel Enrichment. Or in the center, you get a little of both. I like to start with a little of both. Down at the bottom, you will see the map dot threshold. What this does is says anytime that the map dot or the change of map is more than a hundred kPa per second, we will start using that value to find out where we are in the curve. The TPS dot, actually this one. Actually, this one is the map dot curve. 
This is the TPS dot curve. Same sort of thing. Anytime the threshold is more than 50, start using this curve. Down at the bottom, I normally leave the cold Excel set to 100. These values on the right, what those do is that is at that RPM, whatever's in this box, you will get full Excel enrichment below that RPM. You also have a zero Excel enrichment above 8,000. What we found is some motors, once you get to a certain point, you really don't need acceleration enrichment. Um, in my case, it's a fairly high revving motor, so I've got that set at 8,000, and the other one on the below is set at 3,000. You'll be able to experiment with that on your particular motor. So the next thing we want to do is go into Mega Log Viewer and get a lot of data. It's best to have like a half hour of track data. Um, this happens to be about 10 autocrosses all pulled into the same data. What I've done is set up a data filter editor and created one called map under 95 and defined that as map is less than 95. What it does is throws out all data when the manifold air pressure is below 95 kPa. And what I did is generated a curve. You'll see a very definite, all the data that got thrown out was down here in the black. I have actually activated the map under 95 kPa, and I've also thrown out the transitions. And what I get is a fairly clear area that I don't get any data. Above that, this is the 95 and above kPa data that was left. By the way, I'm plotting RPM, throttle position sensor, and I've got a field called yellow dots. Literally what it does is only puts yellow dots on the screen, makes it a little easier to see. I can also do this in histogram view. Basically what this does is throws out that same data from the transients and the map under 95 kPa and shows me the average kPa at each throttle position down the left side, uh, RPM along the bottom. These happen to be my breakpoints that I set up for my TPS-based fuel mapping. You can also see on the left side, I have it set far color based on value and don't generate, basically don't auto-generate the axes so that I can use the arrow up and arrow right key and set those to whatever value I want. In the next screen, I'm doing exactly the same plot, but I've now made the color as the Z axis, this throttle position. And you can see at what throttle position I basically exceed 95 kPa, or essentially I'm darn near full throttle. Because of the scaling I've used for TPS, I end up with essentially straight lines. The green line is where I actually set uh, the next curve. Now, under Excel Enrichment, we're going to use those values we just created. Come down to TPS Wide Open Throttle Curve, and a pop-up will come up or a screen in which we can set the TPS at each RPM. Basically, what this does is if I'm at near zero RPM, I use a TPS of 10 and an RPM of 50. That basically just completes the curve. But the next one up at 1500 RPM, anything above 35 TPS, I'm essentially at full throttle. At 3000, it takes about 55. At 5000, I'm set at 65% throttle and all the way up to 70% throttle at 9000. Essentially what I'm doing is throwing out any acceleration enrichment once I get to this throttle position at that RPM. So now I want to create fields for Mega Log Viewer. I've jumped to the other program, Mega Log Viewer HD, and we're going to create custom fields. These custom fields are basically the six that I have down the left side. Duty cycle base is the first one. And in the red, those are fields. 
I've selected in the high-speed data log. You have to have these in the high-speed data log to get information in Mega Log Viewer that you want to use. The way I do this is go to Calculated Fields in Mega Log Viewer HD, come down to Custom Fields and add a custom field. And let's just create one of them. I type in into the field name that would normally be white if you haven't created one yet. This happens to be the edit screen. But I'm going to create one engine map acceleration enrichment is what I called it. And I'm going to open a parenthesis. If the engine ampersand 64 close parenthesis is greater than zero, then the question mark is that's an if statement. Give me 0.7, otherwise, after the colon, give me 0.1. Literally, you create all six of them that I gave on the previous screen. And what you can do once you do that is you can create a plot like we see right here. What this is is map, RPM, and TPS is on the top row. The total scale from the bottom left to the bottom right is only about one second. So this is a very fast event. What I did is the TPS, the green line, uh, goes up over a matter of about a tenth of a second. You can see the manifold air pressure go up in white. And eventually, the RPM starts to climb. Eventually is about a hundredth of a second. On the next plot down, we set our scale from 0 to 1.1 on all these engine codes. You do that by hitting the three lines to the right of the field, and you can set the limits. What we can see is also the RPM dot, or the RPM per second that the engine is accelerating at. We've also created duty cycle base and duty cycle one. And you can see the difference between the red and the green on top of each other, assuming that they're scaled the same. I scale them from zero to about 80% duty cycle. And you can see the difference in those is the amount of fuel being added due to acceleration enrichment. The next plot down is, this is the percentage of fuel added. I've got it scaled from 90% actually pulling a little fuel up to a 200% or doubling fuel. And you can see the acceleration enrichment come in and taper off. Here is my map dot and TPS dot. These are the limits we set on the previous screen to give you an idea of just how clean the TPS dot or map dot are. If you have a little bit of noise in this, that's that setting I showed you on the previous screen. Down at the bottom, these little spikes, that is one engine cycle. So this entire event happened in one, two, three, four, five, about six engine cycles. You can also see I've got the volumetric efficiency. So you can see if there's any spikes in the volumetric efficiency that are, might be driving your change in pulse width or duty cycle. With this information, we have almost everything we need to get a handle on what's going on in acceleration enrichment. On a later video, I'll go to the car and data log the car and show what happens as you add and subtract fuel through acceleration enrichment. If you notice, I'm not showing AFR. The reason I do that is that the rate that this stuff is changing an AFR gauge is almost useless. This happens to be a throttle stab. And we're talking maybe a tenth of a second from left to right, or possibly two tenths of a second. By the time the exhaust gets to your oxygen sensor, reacts, and gives you any sort of answer that makes any sense at all, it's all over. What I'm doing is looking for the response time from when I first stab the throttle till the RPM starts to climb. I want to get that in the neighborhood of within about two engine cycles. Overly rich tends to show up as a laggy throttle response. 
lean tends to show up as an extreme drop in RPM before a steady climb. Correct AE is a clean increase in RPM immediately after the throttle stamp. I'd like to take a moment to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com, the guys that develop Tuner Studio, and they develop Megalog Viewer HD, the software I'm using to analyze all this data. Thank you for watching, and be sure to hit subscribe.